Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the plot. You might have noticed that I missed last week's video and that is because my computer that I normally edit my videos on is totally boxed up at the moment. There's no way I could get one out. So today we've gone back in time. Today is Friday the 11th of June and I've got to get the big job done. The one big job from my last proper video that I spoke about. Hopefully you'll know what that is. I'm surrounded by a scene of chaos at the moment. <laughs> Today is one of the days where I had to bring the car up and I know that that's when I've got a big job. <laughs> if I've got to transport stuff in the car and you can see there's a lot going on. I've had to evict all of the plants from the greenhouse because that has now become the chili house. Let's go have a look. So this is the new greenhouse layout. <laughs> it has become the pepper house and I knew it was going to be tight. <laughs> I knew that I'd really kind of gone overboard a little bit and I was pushing the limit of what I could get in here, but yeah, it's tight. You can see we're going to be growing on the floor this year, which is okay. You know, in June, it's warm enough. You don't have to worry. In the later months and earlier months as well, when it's cold, this can be really bad for them being on the floor because they're not insulated. So ideally, they would all be on staging like this, but we're making do. And you can see we've got the quad grows over here and we've got some more behind me. So there's eight plants that are gonna be in the quad grow this year. I've kind of laid out the plants in, a, to give me a rough idea of where they're gonna go. You can see they're not actually potted on. That is today's job. They're just resting in these. And if you look at the roots, you can see these are really ready. A lot of them are going to flower, which isn't good. I've mistimed this really. It should have happened a week ago, I think, at least. But the good news is that all the peppers do fit just. <laughs> and as you can see, it's very tight. I've had to move these over so that I can get in the greenhouse, but the whole floor is gonna be taken up with peppers and whether or not that's a good idea, you know, we'll see how the season plays out. My main worry is that having to move peppers out of the greenhouse every time I wanna get in and water will mean that I don't, you know, give the plants as much attention as, and care as they deserve and really need to give me a good crop. So we'll see how that goes. But up here on the staging, I've got another load of pots and these are five liters. And I've put them in five liters and that's because I thought that's all I had. But it turns out I did remember earlier in the year to buy some 7.5 liter pots. So that means I'm gonna have to do a little bit of reorganization and we'll see if they're all gonna fit or not. So up here we have the staging and this is currently a mixture of the peppers that, you know, I'm not so fussed about. I don't care about quite so much. And at the back, we've got the super hots and these I do care about very much. But in my last kind of chili update video, I spoke a little bit about those different varieties and what I mean. There's some which I've, I've tried and I know I love. There's some that I'm really excited that are new and there's a lot that are kind of fresh new seeds. I'm just trying out for the first time. I don't know if the peppers are gonna be nice. I don't know if they're gonna make good sauce or anything. Super hots, I do know that I love. This is an orange habanero. But the reason that those are in smaller pots up here is because the Chinens varieties, they take a lot longer to mature. And with our weather in the UK, by the end of September, you know, the season is really coming to a close. Any fruit might continue to ripen, but those super hots, because they take a lot longer to mature, by the end of September, they might not have set all their fruit and you'll end, end up wasting a lot of that plant's potential. So if you put it in a smaller pot, five liters, probably a bit small, but 7.5, kind of perfect from what a lot of other growers have experienced. So they're gonna be in smaller pots. These are gonna be in smaller pots. And in terms of potting mix, I'm gonna be doing two types this year. I'm gonna be doing a bit of an experiment and it's not the best setup for an experiment. I don't have the biggest number of plants, but I am still gonna do a little one and it should be really interesting. The first potting mix, the control, is gonna be the classic compost, little tiny sprinkle of Epsom salts, vermiculite, perlite, blood fish and bone. That's my kind of standard go-to mixture recommended by Chili Chump. It's really well endorsed and it's just a great all-purpose mixture for chilies. The second mix is gonna be a kind of super mix. Now, I've been sent a load of product from 
a company that I'm not going to name yet. They reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in trying out a load of these things? It's a little bit of a specialist that I have here with chilies, but a lot of people do similar with tomatoes or, you know, they have a crop that they really love and they're interested to find out whether or not their products are right for people like you and me who have allotments. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the ingredients that I've used. That's going to be my second mix, the super mix. And it's going to take a little bit of organization to try and figure out what I'm going to be doing. And I'm talking lots and lots because <laughs> putting like actually starting to make the mixture is daunting and it's going to take a long time. I just counted. I've got 17 10 litre pots, <laughs> which is a lot of soil, 170 litres. I don't even know if I've got that much. And there's seven, about 14 plants up here. So that is a lot of soil and it's going to be a lot of work. But before I even do that, I've got to lay out these and start thinking a bit more about which ones I'm going to experiment with and all that. So probably going to have to take it all out and then put it all back in. Right. OK, folks, I think <laughs> after a lot of head scratching, I've kind of got a plan and I'm going to talk you through it really quickly. Hopefully it's interesting, but also it's going to be really valuable for me because I know I'm going to come back to this <laughs> to try and figure out what the heck I was thinking. So first we'll talk about the quad grows. Here we've got the cayennes, four cayenne plants. I'm going to have all of these in quad grows because I know that they do really well. I had one in the quad grow last year and it was the most prolific pepper plant I've ever had. So we're going to put two into a control quad grow and we're going to put two into a test quad grow with all the extra added funky stuff. That left four more spaces in the quad grow and I wasn't too sure exactly what to put in. Here we've got two sugar rush long peach. I really wanted to get a good crop of this. So they're going to go in a quad grow each, one in the test, one in the control. And then I had two spaces left over without any properly applicable peppers. So at the back I've got one Ahi Fantasy and then over here I've got this big boy, which is a poblano, and that's going to go in the quad grower as well. Most of the rest are in 10 litre pots, farmer's market jalapeno, ahi norteño, and then over here we've got the super hots. And what I've done, most of these are in 7.5 litre pots now, and then we've got two left over which are in the 5 litre. And the ones in the 5 litre are kind of just backups, I guess. Hopefully these will now be able to fit. I have left some in the greenhouse I don't really have space to do anything with and that is all the starfish. So they're going to stay in five litre pots. Well, I haven't put them in five litre pots yet, but they will be in there. So that is the plan. One other thing I'm going to have to think about is arranging them in the greenhouse because I don't want all of the test subjects on one side of the greenhouse and all of the control on the other because obviously there might be different parts of the greenhouse which get more sun than others. So I'm going to have to kind of, you know, put these scattered around so that the position doesn't make too much of an impact because we don't want to be saying that the products are amazing when in fact it just turned out that, that pepper was getting more sun than the rest. But it's time to get mixing. And I've got the wheelbarrow out because this is basically my biggest container that I've got. So I'm going to be mixing it all up in the wheelbarrow. And wish me luck, it's going to take a while. <laughs> because I've never potted up at a scale like this, I just keep forgetting how many other little bits and bobs there are. I've just set up the quad grow in the greenhouse. I forgot that that was new, so I had to do that. I've got out a load of gravel trays as well to hopefully assist with watering. I've got the bamboo canes out ready because these guys are going to need some support. And where I'm going to be moving them around a bit to get in and out of the greenhouse, I can't kind of tie them to the top of the greenhouse. I've got the shop bought compost. I've got a mixture of home base and wicks, just peat free compost. So not the best. It doesn't review the best, but um, I think I've got everything ready to start making up the mix. But what I'm going to do now is split these into the ones that are getting the super mix and the standard mix. Oh, oh, it's an ordeal, folks. I tell you that. This is definitely one of those jobs that takes a lot longer than you're expecting. But we've got our first mix, the control mix. We've got our first pepper, which has the privilege of being potted up, the Ahi Fantasy. And we're going to see how far this first mix goes. 
I'm not expecting it to be too far, to be honest. I think 10 litre pots, this is gonna go down pretty quick. It's definitely going down very quick. So that's about where we want it, I think. And then we can start to fill around it. And this is honestly, nearly half the wheelbarrow is gone already from one plant. Pushing around the side, always a good idea to have something on the bottom to catch all the spillage. And one thing I did forget, the stake. Maybe slightly optimistic with this, but um, we'll see. We'll see, we'll probably get about that, that size. Is that gonna be okay? Oh yes, definitely, definitely ready to come out of these pots. And that's the first one, the Ahi Fantasy. It needs a little bit more compost, you know. I don't want to give it any more. Wow, so that has used an awful lot from just one plant. These 10 litre pots are no joke. I've never grown in anything bigger than five. Should be easy to tie on. Number one, okay. This is gonna take a while. Oh no. <laughs> My goodness, folks, <laughs> this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. I've gone through a few more of these wheelbarrows. <laughs> I'm still smiling, you know, I'm still enjoying it. It's good, but we're coming up to five o'clock now. And I got up here about one o'clock and I was hoping to maybe be starting to finish. I'm not even halfway. <laughs> so this might be one that runs into tomorrow, but I've just got to the last four of the first half. That's not including the five litre starfish, actually. And these are the quad grow. So all I have to do for these, take out any debris, rubbish, and slot this wicking matting through. This is um, really cool stuff. It's quite expensive though, unless you can buy it in bulk. But obviously when you get a quad grow, it comes with it. The roots do attach to it, but if you leave them for long enough, they'll sort of come through. That's a bit far. You want the top to just kind of come in line with the pot there. And then you can just fill around it. And when that sits in the reservoir, this will suck up all the water and the nutrients. These quad grow systems are kind of similar in principle to hydroponics, but it's not quite the same. The feed that we, we give these, this is upside down, don't do it that way, um, is kind of similar to what you would use in a hydroponic system. And, Using that kind of thing with chilies is a little controversial because normally for hydroponics, you'd have what's called an ebb and flow system. You wouldn't have the roots submerged in water permanently. You'd have some kind of controller that kind of treated it like a tide. So it goes up and floods the roots and then goes down and up. Whereas with these, the soil is kept moist, which chili peppers don't usually like. They like to kind of dry out. So I was really surprised at how well my peppers did in this last year, but that's what you get for experimenting. Sometimes it pays off. The company even sell a chili grow specifically, which is a bit smaller and is kind of, I think, intended to dry out a little more, but you don't need to use them. If you're, if you're starting your chilies early, like I did with a grow light, then, well, even last year, I didn't do that. Last year, my chilies kind of start of May were absolute tiny, tiny little things. So. You don't even need to do that, but if you've got a quad grow, I recommend sticking a chili in there and seeing how it goes. It is not easy to move around in here, and there's a lot of stakes. Oh, I haven't staked this one, um, which are kind of threatening to poke me and jab me. Oh God, I'm sure it's fine. This just goes in here. You go inside, pull it down, and it's, it's, so, oh my God, I've just pulled a muscle. What's happening? Oh, I'll have to voice over that bit, I think. Oh, maybe not. Oh my God, that hurts. Why? Okay, so we're making progress slowly. <laughs> Emphasis on the slowly. 
but surely. And the sun is just beginning to set, so I'm probably turning blue. It's quarter to six, 10 to six now. And um, yeah, I'm not even halfway still, although the quad grays are done. The whole floor is now full, so I'm gonna have to get in there and give that a good rearrange before these go in, because I get 13 more plants. Um, and some of them are in bigger pots than they were before now, so I'll be able to squeeze them in, I'm sure. But these plants are the ones that are getting the super mix. And I just wanted to talk quickly about the ingredients that are going into this. We'll start with this one, which is green sand. Um, and although it's called sand, uh, green sand, and it is a kind of sand, it's meant to have really interesting micronutrient benefits for the plants. And as well, it's meant to be really good for water retention, which sounds a little strange for sand. It sounds a little counterintuitive. So we'll see how we got on with that. This one is neem cake meal. Now I've spoken about neem a lot and neem oil. It's got fantastic pest repellent properties and you might have noticed, I've been around my plants all day, my chilies all day, and I haven't seen a single aphid. I haven't spoken about a single aphid. And that's because they're not here. They haven't got a bit of slug damage still, but absolutely no aphids to be seen. And that's because I've been drenching them with neem oil. So neem cake oil does a similar thing, same pest repellent properties, but once again, also lots of good micronutrients for your soil. This one is black soldier fly frass. Now, if you imagine mealworms, you're probably familiar with those. Well, black soldier fly frass is made from black soldier fly larvae, which look very similar to mealworms. Just wait for that plane, shall we? So they're very similar to mealworms and they are a fantastic source of soil organic matter, but also they have similar pest repellent properties to neem oil. So these, these plants should be indestructible. They shouldn't be touched by pests. And they contain chitin, which is quite rare in the soil. And when you combine it with this, which is malted barley flour, this has something called chitinase in it. And it's full of other enzymes, which are meant to really help basically make a lot of the nutrients that are in the soil actually more available to your plants. And as well, it's got its own micronutrient and macronutrient benefits. So with those four, we should be doing pretty well. And as well, I've got some other bits that are gonna be on sort of foliar sprays. The quad grow is gonna get some beneficial anaerobic microbes and all that sort of stuff. So absolutely loads to test out on these peppers. And it should be really, really interesting. We'll see how it goes, but I'm going to carry on potting these up. I haven't actually made this mix yet, and as we're losing the light, this is probably the last you'll hear of me today. And I'll probably be back tomorrow to show you what we've been up to. Well, folks, next day, and it is an absolute scorcher today. What I did was I spent up until 9 p.m. yesterday working on the peppers, and they're looking pretty good. So let me spin you around, show you in the greenhouse. So, it's looking like there's a bit more space than there actually is in here because I've got three peppers that go down here that I've had to take out to show you indoors. But you can see the quad grows are filled at the back. There's loads on the floor and these are in gravel trays which should make watering a little bit easier. And I've been able to have a 10 litre next to a 7.5. They just fit perfectly. And pretty much every pepper has a control counterpart and a super mix counterpart, and they are all in exactly the same pot sizes, so it should be nice and easy to compare. This quad grow at the back is the super mix with all the added stuff, the green sand, the neem cake meal, and all that stuff. Up here, we've got a selection of super hots. These are all in 7.5, and these are all control. So I'm gonna have to put some of the super mix ones up here to kind of even it out, make sure they get in the same amount of light. Over on this side of the bench, we've got everything that is mostly still in five litre containers. So these are the kind of forsaken ones. And depending how the year goes, I might end up putting a few of these starfish peppers outside. You can see this is what I've used to mark the difference between the super mix and the control. <laughs> so hopefully that stays nice and simple. I do have an Ahi Norteño here. That's in a 7.5 litre, but most of these are five. Hopefully the tables can take it. And out here, I've got the three others. This is a Poblano in a 10. We've got the Reaper Cross Dougla and a Peach Ghost, all a super mix. I'm really happy I was able to get it done. It did take a long time, 
I'm just up here today to check that they're all surviving. They all look fine. They'll probably droop a little bit now they've been repotted, but they should bounce back pretty quick. And I do need to repot these ones at the back. You can see these starfish are still in there. One litre pot, so I need to get them moved on. But oh my goodness, it was quite an endeavour. I really underestimated it, so yeah. Oh God, I'm really tired. I'm still feeling it today, the next day. I was in fact so tired when I recorded this video that I forgot to do a proper outro. <laughs> so I'll say thank you ever so much for watching guys and hopefully I'll see you again next time.